Hey everybody, welcome back once again. It is your girl, Ella Mo. And as I'm sure you can tell, I have been without a voice for like five days. And as someone that never shuts up, it is brutal, like absolutely killing me. Anyways, a girl's gotta make do with what she got, which isn't a whole hell of a lot, but you know, I got things to talk about. It's time for that 11 month update. This past month, quite a bit has happened. And honestly, I'm gonna be talking about some pretty, not overly explicit things, but some pretty private materials. I'm gonna be using like stereotypically assigned anatomical names and labels. So if that's gonna bother you, or if you're a family or friend that might not wanna hear some kind of private crazy stuff going on in my life, Feel free to check out now, but realistically, it's out here for information and to share what's going on. To just jump right into it, the big thing that I've been dealing with this past month is atrophy. Atrophy is brutal and weird, and to be quite blunt about it, this doesn't typically happen that much anymore, but when I had um, an erection, it was painful and kind of like stinging and it felt like the muscle inside was expanding more than the skin around it was kind of willing to allow. And it kind of freaked me out so I talked to my doctor about it and sure enough he said, you know, it, it's a muscle and it's one of these things where you kind of have to like use it or lose it and honestly I have no sex life and thinking and talking about it now I don't know why but I really just have not been exploring myself that way for a number of months so the doctor kind of said to me hey like you're gonna have to use it a little, little more regularly if this is something that you wanna kind of correct or prevent from happening because with atrophy comes shrinkage and distorted shape and just a number of issues like this that aren't really such a big deal to me as I'm not necessarily using that organ, but at the same time, I want as much tissue to work with when it comes to my time to have vaginoplasty. I don't want to have to have a complex procedure because I just have not been doing upkeep. I definitely knew going into it that hormones could cause shrinkage and could cause erectile dysfunction in situations like that, but I don't think it was ever just laid out so plain and simply beforehand that it was atrophy. I don't, know, I, I, don't, I don't know how I misperceived that or whatever, but I, I think the big thing I didn't quite realize is that I could play a role in it. I think with atrophy occurring, it also was more just a shock of how disconnected I've been from myself sexually. I've been saying to friends that I really have a solid understanding of myself as a woman when I'm out walking around, interacting with people, going to work, seeing friends, whatever it is I'm doing. But in terms of myself sexually, when I get into a position like that, for whatever reason, I just made some weird kind of like mental switch where it was like instantly I'm reverted back to the expectations that were put on me being perceived as male. In terms of trying to pursue dating or seeing other people, it really kind of just made me insecure and uncomfortable. And in terms of exploring myself, it made me feel shame. I guess I never really quite realized just how being able to see my anatomy triggered my dysphoria in that my dysphoria really kind of blindsided me in a way where I had really quite compartmentalized who I was sexually from socially. I, I guess having to perform under male stereotypes and pressures for so long, probably also because I was like, really jarred open to be sexually active a lot sooner 
like earlier on in life than I was really ready for. Probably had a hand in that where I at just some point just learned that I needed to disconnect who I was socially from sexually in order to emotionally still survive and be like okay with myself. It's been a really like frightening and alarming process, but I'm also quite grateful for it because it's been monumental in helping me realize these blind spots in my transition. I really did my best to get as much mental work done in the 10 years of me recognizing that I was trans and coming out largely because like I wanted to make sure that I was mentally like sound enough and sure enough of who I was to be doing like going through transition. Now I am so grateful that I'm going to be doing all this like monumental mental self-evaluations and growth to get to the point where I'm going to be in prime spot for when vaginoplasty comes. Another big aspect though of me coming to understand myself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually through atrophy, but in the grander scheme my transition, is this process of having to exercise this, this muscle if I'm wanting to prevent atrophy, but also learning like my anatomy does not work the way it used to. I used to be able to physically stimulate myself and have a climax without being meant, like emotionally engaged at all in what I was doing. It didn't mean that I didn't maybe have emotions for um, the, my partner, but it meant that I was emotionally removed from who I was expected to be in that scenario. I'm sorry this is like so like jumpy and breaky, but like <laughs> even as I'm describing this to you now, I'm having like self-awarenesses and recognizations. It's a part of what makes me love doing these videos because it's so cathartic. Essentially though, my anatomy does not function the same way now. And I started getting really insecure about that. I started getting really worried. Like, if I can't have an orgasm before vaginoplasty, why would I jump into surgery hoping that the reconfiguration will all of a sudden set me free? I, I think that that's like a, a dangerous or problematic mindset to have. You know, I, I would never go into a surgery expecting or thinking that it's just going to fix or cure me. I'm really grateful for spaces though, like Ask Trans on Reddit, because it allowed me to be able to look into this a little more and realize, okay, the reality of the situation was not that I'd probably never have an orgasm again, but just that my anatomy now works like that of a, a woman. I really had to relearn my body and it, it's amazing how much insecurity I brought to revisiting myself in this way. And then it was a lot of like also recognizations that even whenever I did used to masturbate before transitioning, it was more out of the like hormonal compulsion. I don't have any of that now as a, like since transitioning or, or taking hormones and it's in a lot of ways been very freeing to me, but in a lot of ways it's allowed me to just completely leave everything that I felt shameful and crappy about before behind and now I've neglected it. So much so that, you know, my I'm having atrophy. So that is really like the big wake up call that, that atrophy has been giving me. Now I'll probably go into this a little more in the next video, but I really just wanted to kind of introduce that this is the big thing that I've been dealing with this month and it's been a wake up call and alarming and jarring and terrifying yet beautiful and at the end of the day it's not the end of the world. And I am so grateful to have my friends and support systems around me that I do and that I can be so free and open and not just with them, but you guys, because 
I, I want people to be able to know. Like the, the whole point of me sharing my journey is to educate and, and share another trans experience, to create visibility, to create awareness as to what some of our lives entail. And at this point in mine, it, it feels like awkward and weird and like, uh, why am I going through second puberty so late in life? <laughs> but like, it's kind of funny and you have to be able to step back and laugh at it. And like, you also have to allow yourself to be humbled because it, this really is such a, a beautiful thing. And at the end of the day, this is my journey. This is a part of me getting to become the, the beautiful and wonderful woman that I have been working so hard to get towards and am every day falling more and more in love with. And it's great to see the spots where I maybe wasn't doing that because I need to, I need to love myself more and better. And I deserve that as each and every one of you do as well. So hopefully this isn't too weird for some of you. Hopefully for others, you know, it's maybe a wake up call to spend some time with yourself, love yourself, do something for you, you know, whether it's, you know, exercise this way or paint your nails or, you know, change your hair, do something that makes you feel great and never forget to stop loving yourself holistically. Until next time though, remember to keep your pencil sharp and your mind sharper. Have a good one.